Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're going to configure layer three switching on my USW Pro 24 PoE switch. I've had lots of people ask me to do a video on this, so this is that video. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You'd find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks, and we have a Discord server, which I'll put a link in the description below. So layer three is still in alpha within the Ubiquiti network. So you need to keep that in mind. It could still be buggy. The reason we would do layer three switching is to offload the inner VLAN routing from our router, so our UDM Pro. You could also set this up with different firewalls, but for now we'll focus on the UDM Pro. So let's go over to my Unify controller. Now we're in my Unify controller and I do have a few layer three switches. So I have my aggregation switch pro, we have my enterprise switch, and then we have this layer three test. This is the USW24 Pro PoE. So we need to create a couple new networks. So how we do that, we go to our settings wheel and then we click on networks. From the networks tab, we're gonna create a new network and I'm gonna call this VLAN 155. We're gonna give it a VLAN tag of 155 and then we're gonna use our gateway type as switch. Here we need to specify which layer three switch we wanna use. I'll click on where it says enterprise switch and we'll change that to layer three switch. Now we need to give it a gateway and IP subnet. So we'll give it 192.168.155.1 slash 24 and then update the DHCP range. So the Unify switch will actually be handing out our IP addresses and then we'll press save. Now we have the network created. We could see under the purpose that it says corporate and then in brackets switch. That means we're doing our VLAN and our DHCP through the switch. So let's create one more network. I'll press create new network. We'll have this as VLAN 160. I'll put the VLAN ID of 160 and then we'll click on switch. We'll choose that layer three test switch. And then we'll give it a gateway IP subnet of 192.168.160.1 slash 24 and then update the DHCP range and press save. Now I'm going to go over to my USW24 and put one port into VLAN 155 and one port into VLAN 160. So I'll click on devices. We'll go to the layer three test switch, click on ports, and then I'm going to put it on port 23. We'll put this switch port profile to VLAN 155 and press apply. On port 21, we'll put that into VLAN 160. I'll click on the edit pencil and then switch port profile VLAN 160 and we'll press apply. Right now, my computer is currently plugged into a different switch and I'm sitting on my 192.168.10 network. So we could go IP config and we could see I'm getting an IP of 192.168.10.58. I'll grab my ethernet cord and then I'm gonna plug it into port 23, which is on VLAN 155, and we should get an IP address. Now we could see that my computer's plugged into port 23 on VLAN 155. Let's go to a command prompt and then type in IP config. We now see that my computer is getting an IP of 192.168.155. Six. So we're in the correct VLAN and we're getting a DHCP address from our switch. When we create a network using a layer three switch, Ubiquity automatically creates its own network. If we click on settings and then networks, we could see this inner VLAN routing network was automatically created and it's getting an address of 10.255.253.0/24. Within our switch, it also creates a default route towards that inner VLAN routing address. And I'll show you guys that in a minute when we get into the switch. A couple things with the inner VLAN routing using the layer three switch. So if we have two different networks, so my VLAN 155 and my VLAN 160, to block inner VLAN routing, we can't use the firewall rules in the UDM. So if we click on my settings and then go to my firewall, you could see right now I have block inner VLAN routing. And we could also create a new rule block VLAN 155 to 160 and we could drop it. We could go to a network and put that at VLAN 155 and the destination would be 160 and press save. Even by doing this, the inner VLAN routing will still work. We need to create an access control list within our switch. So on port 21, I have an access point plugged in. We could see it's on 192.168.160.6. If I bring up a command prompt, and I ping that address, it will go through. 
and you can see it's going through even though we have that firewall rule in place. So we'll SSH into the switch and create an access control list to block this network out. So now let's get into the switch to block the inner VLAN routing between VLAN 155 and VLAN 160. So we've opened up a PuTTY session and I'll type in 192.168.10.98. That's the IP address of that layer three test switch and we'll press open. I've set the username and password to YouTube. Now you can see that we're into the switch command line. The next command we need to do, we need to telnet into the local host. Now we're into the switch configuration. If we click on the question mark, you would see all the available commands to us. We have enable, exit, help, logout, password, and so on. We want to get into the enable. So we'll type enable and press enter. From here, we could take a look at that static route that it automatically creates for us when we enable layer three switching. We would type show IP route. And we could see that it has a static route of 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, .0, 0 pointing towards 10.255.253.1. What we need to do, we need to create an access control list. So we need to go into the configure mode. We'll type configure and press enter. I may do a separate video on switch commands if you'd like to see that. So in the configure terminal, we're gonna type in IP access list, and then we could press question mark to see which is the next command that we need to do. Here we could either enter a name, we could rename or resequence. I'm going to call this VLAN 155 and we'll press enter. Now we're in the config IPv4 access list and this is where we're going to create our rules. We could press the question mark and see all the available commands. So we have our sequence number, we have deny, we have do, exit, permit, and show. We're going to want to do the deny command. So we need to deny IP and then we need to do our source IP or subnet. So 192.168.155.0. Next up, we need to put our wildcard mask. If you don't know a lot about wildcard mask, I suggest Googling it, but it's pretty much the reverse of a subnet mask. So 0.0.0.255. And then we could press the question mark again. The next commands that we could put in is the destination IP. We could put in any, or we could just have a single host. We want to cover the full subnet. So we'll type in 192.168.160.0. And then we'll put in the wildcard mask again of 0.0.0. .0 255 and press enter. After the deny command, we need to permit IP any any and press enter. Now we need to do one more rule. So I'm going to exit out of this and we need to apply this rule to VLAN 155. So we need to type in IP access group. The name of the access list that we created, which was VLAN 155. And then we could press the question mark to see what's next. So we have control plane, we have in, out, and we have VLAN. We're going to want to specify the VLAN. So VLAN 155, and then we need the direction, and the direction will be in, and press enter. The last thing we need to do, we need to write this to the memory of the switch. So we'll exit out of the config, and then type write memory. And now the configuration has been saved. I'm going to switch my computer back to the 155 VLAN and we shouldn't be able to ping the access point on VLAN 160. My computer is now on VLAN 155 and we could confirm that by typing IP config and we could see that I'm in 192.168.155.6. Now let's look at my clients and we could see that that one access point is on 192.168.160.6. So now let's try to ping it and we shouldn't be able to. So ping 192.168.160.6. And you can see our requests are timing out. So that access list does work. It's a little more work to get it up and running, but if you need to offload from your firewall, this is a good way to do it. If you have any questions about this video, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.